So on today's episode, we are talking about experiencing your experience. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Welcome everyone to another episode of I'm Finding Peace. I'm Chris, here with my co-host Missy. And uh, we are here for another episode of quarantine and isolation time, whatever you want to call this. Um, But I guess that's some of the things we'll be talking about. Um, So we're going to be looking at experiencing our experience. We'll talk about what we mean by that, but a couple quick reminders. We want to thank everybody for listening. Uh, We have been noticing an increase in in our uh, viewers and listeners, so wonderful. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate you. Yes, Um, and want to remind everybody of the Patreon page, so if you are liking what you're hearing and you want to become a patron, uh, check out the show notes, head over to a uh, Patreon, look us up, and you can get some really good uh, gifts and bonuses if you want to help us out and keep in this podcast and, uh, you know, doing all the technology that's involved in it. Also, great news if you haven't seen the social media yet, but if you happen to have uh, one of those devices that you can talk to and it talks back to you, uh, so if you have a, I, I'm, I'm cautious to say, cause I think Missy's will turn on, but if you have the, uh, Alexa apps, whether it's, uh, the echo or the show or on your phone or anywhere you have it. Now, all you need to say is Alexa play on finding peace. And you will have our whole episodes. Uh, You will get to listen to the most current episode and any episode you have yet to uh, listen to. So um, give it a shot. Uh, Enable that app. And like I say, you can listen to it on all your devices, wherever you happen to have that uh, so named wonderful app. It didn't turn on, so you got you left out. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, so, what's uh, what's happening on uh, your end, Missy? Well, you know, in the midst of everything that's going on, uh, uh, life's been pretty good for us. Everybody's happy and healthy. Um, You know, luckily nobody in in my family or close circle of friends has been very affected. Um, at least health-wise, um, by what's going on. Um, we got a contract on our house yesterday, so uh, awesome. we're super excited um, to be buying our dream home together. And um, so uh, we'll be signing that contract here very shortly. As soon as you and I actually wrap up, I'm gonna I'm gonna get that <laughs> taken care of, and you know, be well on our way to uh, to a new home. So we're super excited about that. How about you guys? How are you doing there? Well, that, that's awesome news, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I guess we'll cut this episode short. You want to go sign the contract? <laughs> but, um, well, it is between us and, and a new home right now. Yeah. Um, so, no, it, it's, uh, things are going uh, fairly well. You know, I'm, um, luckily, you know, a, a big part of me is an introvert, so, uh, you know, hanging out right now and, you know, kind of doing the social distancing and uh, isn't overly troubling for me. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> you know, there are things you miss and, you know, one of them would be choice. You know, I mean, I, I normally don't choose to necessarily go and be social, but, you know, it, it's always the thing that's taken away is the thing that you want. Yeah. So, um, you know, having that choice to go be social would be nice. Um, but so far, uh, so good, and, and it's working out with my clients. We could, we could do video sessions, and uh, yeah. so that's good. You know, I, I was already set up for that anyways, so it wasn't a big 
change. It was just moving some of the clients who weren't taking advantage of that to, you know, that platform. But um, other than that, you know, I, I think I'm faring on the lucky and blessed side, um, you know, of some of the sad stories that, I, that I've heard, you know, of other people's uh, lived experience, you know, going through this. But um, so we, we all have our own struggles. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, one of the things that I've noticed is that, um, you know, even though I'm up to date on the news and what's going on locally and, and more globally, uh, staying away from the news has helped me tremendously not to have such a uh, panicked experience about what's going on. Um, you know, and that that's pretty much part of, of uh, what we're here to discuss today is that, you know, you really do need to experience those feelings when they come up. Um, stifling what you have going on is really, it's just, it's fear of letting out that emotion. And um, I think that it's probably been one of the most healing things I've learned in my life. It's been one of the lessons that I've really uh, challenged myself with because vulnerability growing up was like, mm -mm, does not happen, suck it up, don't do that buttercup, you know? And, um, and uh, so I always thought it was bad or I wasn't gonna get love if I showed emotion. And so vulnerability I always thought was a weakness really. Right. And um, so lately, um, even through this, uh, it, it's, been, it's been a very healing experience for me to actually allow those feelings out and then pretty much just move on from it and, and not, you know, not be scared of the pain, not be scared of the hurt or the happiness, the joy. I mean, it doesn't just go for, you know, uh, sadness. Yeah. No, and, and you bring up a really good point because, um, you know, so many people are feeling so many different emotions and I think it's bringing up for people a lot of uh, past issues that are, are now kind of hitting them. Yeah. And, um, you know, one of the things that I've been hearing from uh, my clients and non-clients, you know, there's just uh, social distancing, talking to neighbors. Um, you know, the word that, that I've been hearing over and over is the word should or shouldn't. Oh, yeah. uh, you, know, you know, I shouldn't be feeling this way or, you know, I, I shouldn't feel happy because other people are suffering, you know. I, I should have done this. I and you know, as true as the statements may be, I think it's important that we stay away from that word and all the variations of that word as much as possible. Yeah, well, like Tony you know, says, you'll shit all over yourself. Exactly. You know, because when we start using that word, that you know, should in and of itself brings up. Um, you know, really expectations that we can't meet. You know, we're, we're either putting too great of an expectation on us in, in the moment that, that we're never going to meet that, or it's an expectation from the past that we can't go back and fix anyways. Well, I think uh, one of the things you've already touched on is, is control. It's very, mm. I mean, we want to control the emotions. We want to control what's going on outside of us. And, and those just aren't always things that we have the ability to do. You know, and I think another thing, um, I'm going to try and remember it verbatim, but I saw a meme just recently and it says, when I started to stop asking myself, why does this always happen to me? Or why is this happening to me? Um, and started asking myself, what is this trying to teach me? Your entire experience can change. You know, you're yep. looking at the lesson of, you know, like, okay, well, I mean, it, it's just as simple as something, you know, and I, I use this as an example before, but like somebody cut you off in traffic and you immediately get triggered. Well, you must do things like that if you're noticing it about somebody else, because in the moment that you interpret, you become the interpretation, which means to me that you are what you see. You, if you spot it, you got it. Yep. You know? Exactly. No, it, it's, it's very important that, you know, we learn our lessons from the past, not looking at, at that past uh, as all of the negatives and the regrets and the shoulds, shouldn't of, should of, uh, you know, but really look at, yeah, well, what is this teaching us? Because um, one of the things, you know, that I really liked was a meme that I saw somewhere in social media that, that was something like, 
um, you know, let's not go back to normal because normal obviously wasn't working. Um, you, you know, it, it's kind of this thing, you know, when people are saying, you know, well, you know, I can't wait for this to be over so we can go back to how we were. And, and there's a part of me that cringes and, and wonders, but what are we learning from this time frame? Yeah. You know, do we go back to normal? And, and is that actually a good thing? You know, maybe it's not so good. You know, may, maybe there's truth in that meme uh, that, you know, what, what can we learn from the experience we're going through right now that might inform our future to maybe be better? Well, and, and the other thing is uh, um, you're saying about, I totally just lost my train of thought. <laughs> that part out. Um, it, it's more like um, we have the ability to learn new things, right? But we keep comparing to the past or trying to predict the future. And, and that's just not possible. I keep hearing the word thrown around, uncertain. And mm. Every single moment of every day of every second of your <laughs> life is uncertain. But, you know, no, well, now we're in uncertain times. Wait a minute. So you're telling me that if you were to have bought a business a year ago, that you weren't certain it was going to, you were always certain at that point that it was going to work out, but that's not possible, you know? And um, I have a good friend of mine I had a conversation with. It was like the concern, well, what am I going to have to do? Well, here's the thing. It doesn't matter. Leap and then grow your wings on the way down. That's the way I've always heard it. It's like um, one of my coaches actually has, has said to me, it's not ready, aim, fire. It's ready, fire, aim. So you're always going to be, you're, you're going after it, but you have to keep re redirecting yourself to what you want. And when the path shifts, you shift with it or you shift back to what you want. Okay, well, just something new you get to create around if there's an obstacle in the way. You know, these are all lessons. This is the way the journey is, and we get to trust the process. Yeah, no, and, it, and I really like that because th there is so much truth in that. You know, in some of the phrases that people are using, you know, I, I, I'm sitting back and thinking, but these are the things I've been trying to work with people on, and, and it's like now, now, you, now you're getting it. <laughs> you know, and that's what it is. It's like this: this had to happen for us to get it faster. Because, I mean, the world is shifting that fast and, and, and yep. you know, could be as a result of or, you know, in response to this COVID-19. But at, all I'm saying is, like, if we just go with the flow of what it is and stop resisting, we can't, we can't change it. We can't control it. But if we resist it, we're going to only hurt ourselves, you know? Yep. And, and that's where, you know, a lot of people, like your example, and that was a perfect example, you know, about, you know, the, the uncertainty of, of these times, because in, in reality, uh, that's what I've talked to many of my clients about through the years. Yeah. We're always in uncertain times. Yeah. You know, the, the next moment it is never guaranteed, and, and the next moment it isn't really certain. No. You know, I mean, I, I have my own plans for this afternoon. Are they going to happen? I mean, I, I would like to think they will. And I hope they will, but I, I can't say for sure they will. And, and that's not because of what we're going through. That's just life. Yeah, that's <laughs> you every know? second of my life. It's like, okay, this is my plan. But my plan gets derailed based on, you know, clients, uh, kids, dogs. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. They're just and, and the less I resist, actually, the happier that I am. You know, I, if I don't have an attachment, then I should say, when you have an attachment, you suffer because you yep. expect it to go out this way. Just like my, my buying the house, I did not at all anticipate that it would take me two months to sell the house. You know, I finally got a contract, but the entire time was like, I'm going to leave it in the universe's hands. Whatever happens, happens. I get to trust. If the house that I'm going to buy gets sold during the process, well, I get to trust that something better is coming along. And God, I feel stress-free. I feel carefree, <laughs> you know, and, and um, it doesn't make me panic because I'm here. I'm, my job is to be this moment, not my past stories, not the, not the circumstances that I lived in, not the future that I'm trying to predict, but to be mm -hmm. this moment right here is the ability to really kind of let that higher power and love flow through you into whatever you have in your circumstances, whoever is in your circumstances. 
Right. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things that I'm hoping that people begin to learn and maybe we take with us when this is over. You know, I mean, at some point this will be over. I mean, I, I think that's fairly a guarantee. Almost everything else is not a guarantee. I mean, who knows what that's going to be like when it's over, but it will be over. Sure. But one of the things that I hope people take is a newfound appreciation and sense of the mindfulness yeah. that all we have is the moment. And one thing that I've noticed from a number of, uh, of people it is they're saying, well, at least I've, I'm slowing down. Yeah. It's forcing us. That's it. Yeah. It is forcing us to take a break. We are in the do all the time, you know, and I'm going to say do, 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 because it sounds funny, but <laughs> that's what we do. We, I mean, like I get up in the morning and I'm like, okay, got to walk the dogs, got to take the bunnies out, got to sit down and do the desk and, you know, take care of my business stuff. You know, well, that's constant doership. But if I'm not coming from a place of happiness, of, of beingness, of love and honor and, and joy and happiness and peace, then my day is going to be extremely chaotic. And with yep. that, I get caught up in it not being those, those ways of being is, is in my mind when I attach myself to a thought of not enoughness or unworthiness or sadness or depression or worry, whatever it is. And then that's when I experience the negative. I'm like, okay, I have to release this because mm -hmm. it's not serving me. And as soon as you do, it's like, it's like almost like holding a cork underwater and then all of a sudden, as soon as you release it, the cork's floating again. And you're like, oh, wow, I feel so much better. Yep. And, you know, for those who have that ability to stay home now for work, um, and, you know, maybe you're getting all your stuff now delivered to your house, and, you know, think about, you know, all of the extra time you have now gained by not commuting, not going out to the store and maybe not having some of these activities that now, you know, we're, we're maybe sitting back and saying, you know, maybe that wasn't even a necessary activity to begin with. Um, so yeah, you, you know, how, how do we start thinking through some of this stuff that, um, you know, coming to this understanding, may, maybe some of the time I was spending on things didn't need to be spent. So uh, I think then the question is, so how are you going to use your time now? And, you know, what are you going to do when we're done and then the bosses say, we'll come back to work? Um, you know, what are you going to do to kind of take some of this with you so that we don't just jump back into those old routines and, you know, eventually find ourselves in the same position where we're all, you know, stressed and tired and that kind of stuff. I think uh, one of the uh, things that I've heard recently that really hit home was that um, in what we're doing now, we have less distractions, which give us the opportunity to heal what's going on within us more. It gives us the opportunity to get to know the energy that's inside us and, and bring us closer with source, universe, God, however you want to say it. Mm -hmm. and, and in doing that, I really do think that there's going to be a greater shift in in the way we treat each other, in the way that life is happening for us, in the happiness that we, we get to experience. So um, I, it's actually a really exciting time for me to be able to witness that. And, you know, and I know that most people don't see it that way. I know most people are like, oh my gosh, it's terrible. And I'm, and I'm not negating that fact, but I'm saying that what's going to emerge is what I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. You know? And, and I, I think, you know, this is the perfect time for perspective. You know, how, how do we shift the way we do look at this? Yeah. So when people are saying, you know, how horrible this is, and just like with you, I'm, I'm not going to minimize anybody's, uh, you know, pain or suffering or whatever you're going through. But at the same time, if you shift your perspective and try to find some of the good, yeah. what are some of the positives happening now in your experience? You know, so maybe you do have some extra time or, you know, some of those distractions have been taken away from you. You know, what are you going to do to take care of yourself during this period? Um, and, you know, one of the things that I've noticed, at least in my area, is there's a lot more people who are out walking, jogging, riding bicycles. 
Um, you know, people seem to be waving at everyone. Um, so I, I wonder if there's this idea where people are just getting friendlier. Um, you know, I, I had to go to one of the big box stores yesterday and pick up my order. And, um, you know, I, I don't remember employees ever being mean, but, you know, they never were like out of their way nice either. You know, it was just that was their job. They did their job. I encountered at least three different people yesterday um, as I'm sitting in the car waiting for them to bring stuff out. And they were the nicest that can be. Everybody's saying hello. You know, hey, is somebody helping you yet? You know, getting the stuff. The person who's loading the car was like, hey, you know, do you want me to put this here? Do you, what about this? You know, asked about a product. You know, hey, I see you got this. Never tried it. What do you think? Um, when I you know, so... I'm sorry. I, I think that that's part of uh, the common humanity. We really do realize mm -hmm. that, you know, everybody is hashtag in this together. This is not just the local to our state. This is not to our city or, you know, it is a global pandemic and everybody is experiencing it. And I think that that might be a great uh, listener challenge. Hey. Yes, no challenge. Um, you know, we need to be more appreciative of the people that have been out in this working 100% of the time, nonstop, you know, factory workers to get us the products that we need, farmers are getting us the food that we need, the face-to-face -face store cashiers, the bankers. I mean, you know, I'm sure the list could go on and on. Truckers, at, you know, hospital workers. I could go on and on, but like, mm -hmm. what is something that we could do for them to show them our appreciation? I have seen some really incredible displays of love. That's, mm -hmm. that's something else that, you know, has really had been beautiful emerging from this. A, a daughter who uh, couldn't go to her prom and her dad put on a tuxedo, got her all dressed up, you know, mm -hmm. got flowers from the garden, mom made a corsage. And they had, you know, a, a nice little prom. I've seen uh, chalk writing on on the uh, entry to the hospital where they were saying, thank you, you're wonderful, you're doing a great job, you're amazing. Um, things like that, that just like, you know, they hit home, they, they make you so touched and loving and emotional and warm and fuzzy on the inside, you know, but like those are the people that are keeping America going right now. Yes, we're all working. Yes, we're still doing our best but not all of us are in those positions that we're right. exposed to what's going on either. Yeah, I think that's an awesome listener challenge and, you know, looking forward to people responding and, you know, um, hearing what it is that, that you are doing with this. And um, because, you know, we can choose to respond to this in, in negative ways and, and keep those negative emotions going or, we can choose the positive side and, you know, just try to figure we are in this together. And, um, you know, when you talk about the control, there's nothing we can do about what's happening, but we can do everything about how we respond to this, you know, and, and if we start kind of sharing that love and being kinder to people and, and really starting to understand who's important, you know, in our world, um, you know, and, and I've seen a lot of memes about that, and I think that's great, you know, but I think there's some truth that, you know, yeah, even though, you know, athletes and movie stars and all that, I mean, they're, they're great people in and of themselves, they have their own talent, but I think we need to put that in perspective, yeah. you know, are they essential to the running of, of a country, you know, running of a world, um, you know, they have their role to play and their parts to play. But I think it's important now to start looking at who's essential, yeah. you know, um, and maybe beginning to change some of that social uh, dialogue as well. You know, when, especially when we start looking at, you know, future careers and all, you know, I, I've seen that other meme going around, you know, if, if your kid doesn't know what to do in the future, look at who's still working right now. Yeah. Um, you know, that to start looking, you know, what are those jobs that will always be around regardless of what's going on? around the world. Um, and, and that can put a whole different shift on society when we do move forward from this. Absolutely, absolutely agree.
it's been uh, it's definitely been eye opening, I think, for everybody. And it it's uh, <laughs> sorry, things going on in the background. Um, yeah, it, it's just it's important to remember that thoughts are not you. They don't have to be, you know, what you what you consider. Um, sorry. They definitely want to play. Okay. <laughs> oh, go to your room. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, thoughts are just thoughts. They're not. They're not what. Um, they can go away just as easily as as they come. If we attach ourselves to them, then we're going to we're going to experience things that aren't so pleasant. If we, you know, if we just allow the cork to float and go with the flow, then we're going to have an easier experience and. And it's going to be one you're going to want to share with people. It's going to be one that's going to be, you know, one you're learning from and you're going to, you're going to want to um, make sure that everybody else kind of has that same kind of experience. Yep. No, most definitely. You know, and, and that's why you know, I really like this topic of experiencing your experience because, you know, I think that's really what we've been talking about is, you know, that whatever you're going through it is what you're going through and, and, you know, feel it, live through it. But I think the important thing is learn from it because when we do get to move forward and, you know, get released, so to speak, um, we're going to have choices to make, you know, I mean, do we go back to, you know, normal as usual, uh, or do we take some of these aspects that, you know, we've been noticing all these caring things and creative uh, things people are doing and, you know, the expressions of love, are, are we going to continue that or are we just going to go back to the way we were? Yeah, I really think that this can change us as a society. I mean, they say that uh, we kind of go through a pattern, a wave of, you know, a me generation, uh, an us generation, a me generation, an us generation. And I do feel like recently it has been a very much a me oriented generation. And I think that this is part of that shift right now is that we are, we are really not just looking at ourselves anymore. We're looking at our communities, our, you know, um, our families, we're looking at everything more on a, uh, bigger picture. We're, we're kind of getting a bird's eye perspective and seeing what affects who's in our life and how we can help them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, so hopefully we don't go back to normal, yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever normal is. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, as I was saying at the beginning, even for me as an introvert, you know, I'd like to go back to having the choice of going out and being social if, if I want. Um, but, uh, yeah, a lot of lessons that we can be learning from this. And, well, there um, is one thing that I hope we kind of do go back to because I really like hugging. Uh, hugging is is it's good it's nice warm welcome to people i mean handshakes are great too but like when you really know somebody and you want to hug them and you want to just give them a good squeeze like i miss <laughs> that because you know now we're doing the the covid foot shuffle or whatever you know like tapping each other's feet and and, and so just just yeah. my two cents i like hugging <laughs> cool and uh, i hope we go back to that or increase that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, you know, there there is good in what we were all doing prior to this, but yeah. what wasn't so good that, you know, we can uh, hopefully improve from. Yeah. So and I, I think that's, uh, you know, part of the, this, you know, lived experience, you know, for all of us who are going to survive the quarantine, um, yeah. you know, it is all going to be, you know, hopefully about well, what did I learn from that? so that I can, I can impart that in, into my future. Yeah. Well, wrapping up, so, I guess. Yep. Well, that's that's I, why I was going to go with it. Yeah. <laughs> I could feel it. I knew something was going on there. Um, I would have to say that uh, if I had any final thoughts, they would be just, just be in the moment with whatever is that's going on. Just be in the moment and it will make life so much easier for you if you just allow it to all flow through and it'll be over quicker than than if you resist. True, and 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 I I do like that 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 last point. The more we resist things, the longer and harder things are. Yeah. For so sure. yeah, 
<laughs> kind of go with the flow and it is what it is. And, uh, and don't you be know. stubborn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, thanks, Missy. And, you know, the, this uh, has been a great topic. And I look forward to hearing from everyone for the listener challenge and see uh, what everyone comes up with. So feel free to send us messages, you know, either on the platform of which you're listening, uh, through our social media, um, check out the show notes where all of our web pages are listed. Um, don't forget about the new, uh, Alexa app out there. And, um, also and their the Patreon fuzzy stuff. Page. I love the warm and fuzzy stuff. <laughs> we'll shift all the warm and fuzzy stuff to Missy's That's inbox right. and yes. uh, the, the other stuff over to mine. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so that, that'll that be great to see that. And uh, yeah, let's see what we get. And maybe uh, we can do a, a shared blog post on, you know, what people are doing and their suggestions that, that can help everybody else out. Yes, I would love that yep. so much. Awesome. All right, great. Well, have a good day and enjoy signing your contracts and what all of that entails. Okay, thank you guys so much for listening.